All right, folks, working on the 2017 Chevrolet. It's a big Z71. It's got the big 5.3. It's got a money light on. Imagine that. I don't remember what code is in it, but it is a code for loss of communication with a device on the LIN bus. This code is in the PCM. And lucky for us, the PCM only has one device on the LIN bus. In the PCM, that is. And that is what they call the active grill shutter. Um, why they couldn't write one more line of code to it and say lost communication with active grill shutter is beyond me. However, I know they do in the later years. Uh, but this one they do not. So we got to get this panel off here. And I'll show you what's up. But they got to take the whole stinking friend off this thing to do anything. Take that little guy off, we'll set her up here. And then here is your connector for the active grill shutter. That's a pretty easy check. Shim out, baby. <laughs> ah, give up. It's an easy check if you can get the connector undone. There it is. So we're looking at your classic five wire action going on here. Two of these wires are for the ambient air temp. Three of them are for the active grill shutter. Power, ground, and a wind bus. So it has power and ground and that has the ability to talk. A zero to 12 volt wind data bus. Now, this guy stopped by with a Chevy the other day. Had me have a look at it to see if he just needed a gas cap. Well, he doesn't need a gas cap. However, I did check this. We can pull up a diagram, actually, what I did, but essentially a test light, uh, a high amperage one, because this is like on a 15 amp circuit, if I remember right, or at least 10. I stuck a headlight across it, lit up bright, stuck a scope in the Lin bus. Robert's your mother's brother. We got everything we need, except it ain't communicating. So here we are, it needs a new one. I ordered a new one, and I got no idea how to tear it apart, so let's figure it out. Tell you what folks take some piss poor engineering add it times about 12 multiply it times about 12 you're gonna end up with a Chevrolet this is ridiculous I'm following service data here too so the, the whole prying and snapping and clicking and crunching trust me folks it's by the book I am all for progress, still get me wrong, but by golly, this is one of those pieces that's made to go on and not come off. So you've got to try to get to all the release tabs here that hold this little fella on. Yeah, there's another one there. Place my light in here. And then we can pry out on it and I have no way of showing you this until it's off. Make sure, make sure what I'm looking at here. That is another one. F-bomb, F-bomb. Gonna flip a couple F-bombs. Try this. Go about right here. There's one. I tell you, use prying devices. <laughs> all right, got a five foot bar and make it all fall apart. There's another one. We're getting closer. All right. Now let's come down to this one. I'll show you what we did. What a disaster. I think once this is off though, grill pops right off and wham, bam, we're done. So ultimately we've got to get this, you know, plastic trim here off the front. In order to, to do so, it's like a bumper cover. It has this, you know, this retaining block. I don't know the proper name of it without looking it up. And I thought this was weird. They have you unbolt this, according to service data, from the inside of the fender, which 
you know, I, I know GM is kind of ridiculous in a lot of things, but typically they don't have you get to stuff like this where you can just get in there with a wrench. And that's the way it was. Seven millimeter wrench back there just getting after this thing. And they tell you, you know, to pry it out and then to release the tabs on it. And correct me if I'm wrong, but this is made exactly like a bumper cover. Typically you just grab these and pull. And you know, you have to remove the bolt from it. And in this case, also where the fender flare clips into it. So on that side, I'm not taking the bolts out of this because it's a pain in the hoo-hoo to get the bolts out. There's three of them, uh, four rather. So there's one that goes up in through the bumper cover, up through here, two from the back side, and then one through the front of this fender flare. Now this fender flare was already broken, however, uh, when I took it apart. But So this piece here goes on the back of this fender flare. Uh, yeah, I assume this is probably glued on from the factory. It glues in here and it clips into this and it clips into that. And then there's other clips. There's, see, one, two, three, four, five white clips right across the inside of the fender flare. So they pop right in, but this one here, as soon as I took the screw out, it was kind of loose, but it doesn't really matter because I have the screw that holds it on. So anyhow, there's all my excuses. I'm gonna set my screws over here to the side. And that side, we're not gonna pop all this crap loose. Now that we're armed with a little bit of knowledge, right or wrong, it's still knowledge. We're gonna do it our way. Do it my way. So we're gonna take that off. We're gonna peel a couple of these bolts out of the fender flare. We're just pulling the fender flare back. I switched ratchets because I wanted a close head one because I thought I could get in there. Now, let's see if this one, see this one is also broke. I just looked back there and that little thing, it must be double sided tape because it's just hanging there. Like just prying it back like that, it's already there. So we're gonna very gingerly come up here because we don't want to scratch the crap out of the paint. So you just kind of come along here, give her one of those, and you can see this is stuck there. It must be just double sided tape or just really crappy adhesive. It's double sided tape, it's all gooey. So we're gonna come like this because this is plastic, so we can scratch that, it don't matter. And we'll just, um, well, We'll come right up on here. We, it's not like we have to too hard. Take that right off and out the way, as they say. Set that down, okay? And then that leaves us one bolt up in here. It goes straight up in that little guy, okay? Let's see if we can't get that out. So it's just like a bumper cover. You now it's just got the one bolt there, all right? So that's it, right? Now, you should be able to, unless Chevy knows something I don't know, which is definitely possible. I don't know everything. We're gonna get behind this bumper cover. Let me give her a little push. Push, push, push! Just like that. Why do they got you taking that whole stinking thing apart? So if you're following service data, leave the fender liner in, pop your fender flare off and take the stinking bowl out of this thing and then pull it out and you'll see. Let me show you something here. We'll show and tell, okay? We're gonna look at this. Anybody who's taking a bumper cover off, this is the same type of camera. You got one, two, three tabs. This third lock tab, and I'll show you on this once we take it down they go into the corresponding female holes. It's like the whole, you know, male, female thing. Um, and this one, I noticed on the other side also stuck up the most, but all I did is reach in here to press the little male end down. And boop, oh, she pops, pippity poppy. So now we need to come across and release all the rest of these, which are kind of a piss pot to do. Same type of thing, you know, it's a little lock tab here. I don't think I, you can probably see, but yeah, I guess you'll see once it's all apart, but 
So we'll stick the light in here. I'm 100% sure you can't see now. I'm gonna try to release that little fella. Give it a pull. Hallelujah! The whole thing came off. That was the last one we had to get to. Whew. Makes me want to just flip this thing to burn. I'm like, let me turn the camera off for a second. So here's your retaining tabs. Like I said, you do have to take the, the two bolts out. The bolt out of fender flare and the bolt that goes up through. One, two, three tabs there. Yank, they usually just pop out. A couple retainers here don't hold much, but it's, uh, where's them little mother lovers that are under there? Can't see them now. They're all hiding from you. These things right here, there's one. There's another one. There's another one. There's another one. And another one right there. And another one right here. I suppose you can probably just yank, but what they do is they go into these corresponding, we'll call them female holes. And then the ones on the side, you know, click through here. And then up by the headlight through here. And then that's where the screw hole goes. And then the other one from the fender flare goes in there. So that's that, yeah, easy. Don't waste your time undoing the bolts from the back side, idiots. That's the number of bolts you have each side. Two front, one from the flare, one going up through the fascia, and then the two from the fender flare itself. That's it, boom. know what we're doing we can uh, save some time on the next one we do just had a 19 Chevy Traverse came in same code um, same problem wrong way Better go take a look in service data. I thought it showed just eight bolts. However, this feels pretty stout still. Might be, uh, oh, nope, oh, there it goes. Whoever was holding this released. Feels kind of springy in the middle. The squawking noise you hear is this alignment pin. Well, this side's pretty loosey-goosey. Yeah, it feels pretty stout here. Let me grab a flashlight and look just in the middle of the grill to see if I see any I'm holding it. And I don't, so I just give her a little tuck. I think it was just hanging up on the plastic alignment pin right here that lines up in that hole. Oh, we got some aftermarket gizmos. Hang on here, folks. Um, we got some aftermarket wiring here. At least they left enough wiring because then we can go just like this. We'll just set the grill right here. Looks like he's got some lights the fella added on here but left plenty of wire. However, I think this is all we got to do. We're, we, we see what we came to see. Let's get after it. So here's our active grill. The motor is back here. Looks like a bunch of 10 millimeter headed fasteners. So we'll zip them out. Let's grab an impact though. So we don't have to listen to that little guy screaming the whole time. 
bring out the big gun. Quarter inch thumper right here, boy. We'll just peel all the bolts out of it. They did not want this to fall off. <laughs> oh, it smokes. Hey, hey. Easy. There it is. That should be all the bolts. I lost track of how many, but you can play the video back and count if you'd like. It's this many. All right, there. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We got a little clip. Yep, we got a little clippy doodad there. Just like so. So there's that. We've got an ambient air temp sensor right there. And, and that's it. That's it. It's junk. Let's grab a new one. Brand new from Chevrolet right here. It is in the closed position. There's a couple clip one there and one there that will hold us in when we put it in the 35 bolts <laughs> or however many there was we can count it. just like that I guess it's not fitting in there is it there it is fella and then there's a little notch right here where the wiring goes comes up and over oh I did not see that you them tricky little suckers. It did not come with a new ambient air temp sensor. that the uh, harness is just hanging there. Boy, that would have burned my biscuits, man. Get that thing all together. Found out I did a ding dong move like that. So I think it just pops in there, but that would have set the engine light. Yeah, baby. You little suckers, GM. You couldn't spring the extra 10 cents to put this thing in there, huh? I couldn't take the extra five seconds to see if it was in there, huh? So there it is, that just clicks in. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, Got alignment pins on it. Sometimes you gotta slow down to go fast. Now we gotta put all 34 bolts back in there. Oh, we're missing one. Time to go fishing. <laughs> First try. He's my lucky day. Man, all because we barely snugged them, we'll go around. We're gonna double check all of these. I'll make sure none of them are, are loose. Hard to tell with a and you're just babying the impact, especially a quarter inch one. All right, right back to where we started. Let's plug it in. Pluggers right here. Alright, let's grab a scan tool. She should function just fine. And the code is, of course, we have extra codes now. Um, it's this U15101510. Uh, this ignition cycle passed, so that means it's good right now. That would have said failed with the old one plugged in. Uh, these other codes, this uh, 0073, that's because we had it unhooked. Uh, the other ones it must have set since last time it was in yeah, all for the active grill But when it first came in the one five one zero Was the only one so first thing first uh, we're going to clear the codes out of it 
I should have done it in that last screen, but I got to pop back in there. We're going to erase the codes. I'm surprised it didn't open them and just key on. But it didn't, so now our codes are, are gone. And we'll back out, and then we'll, I think we can probably find it under uh, active test here. Come on, baby. Yeah, there we go, active grill shutter. Oops, must hit the alternator or something. <laughs> Look at this guy. Active test, active grill shutter. I should go get my little pokey stick. Wait for this to communicate. Active grill shutter position 100 right now. So we're gonna open, open sesame. And you can see they're opening. Okay, and we'll close it. We're sending it to position zero and it's closing, I'll let you see that. And we are now at position zero. So then we're gonna open again. So it wants commanding it to 100 and it's opening. Our intake air temp is working. It says it's 71 degrees in here, which it's not, it's about 62. So we'll back out of here and we'll go back in, make sure we have no codes. And we'll read the codes, see what the survey says. Boom, we're done, that's it. Show's over, time to go home. Oh, I guess we can't quite leave yet. That's all tight, right? Right? Right. Let's see. And on the back side of this grill, there was nothing holding it on other than that guide pin that I mentioned to you. We'll stick that there. We gotta take the aftermarket wire in here. And you have that kind of up here in the top. Now that's behind that light, I guess. And kind of a little wide up there. You get a little twisty do that. Stick your down in there. Line up the little alignment pin here. Oh, that comes in way easier than it came up. Right? Four bolts on the top, four bolts on the bottom. And we're done. Grab the Ugga Dugga gun. full power. We can put this thing back in. Make sure the seal's where it needs to be. A couple hundred fasteners here. These are all plastic ones. These things sure go together a lot quicker than they come apart, which stands to reason. Reason being, when the guys are standing on the assembly line, and his job all day long, every day, is to put this clip in. They want it to go quick. He ain't got to take them apart. He just got to put them together. That's why these things always go together way faster. At least that's my theory. I'm sticking to it. It. I guess we just stick the plastic piece there on. Huh? You're lined up here in the middle. There's a little tab down here on the bumper that it slides into, also. And then. Get a little pocket screwdriver. This one, same problem. I always have a bumper covers too. Making darn sure that these tabs go up on top of their intended latch. Reach through like that and then give them a little clicky do. Boom. And 
gonna make sure that's all clicked in. Woo! Hallelujah! Then we got this little guy. Let's, we'll click that on. Uh, no, I'm not gonna double side tape that back on. If you think I'm gonna, you're crazy. Cause I'm not. Oh, bless your little heart. Perfect. Good. We'll line this little fella back up. Just like so. And then that has a bolt that goes through the front side there. Seven out of Put that in there. Give it a snug click. And you got a couple of screws that go up through the fender flare. Piece of cake, huh? Way easier than service data, where they pretty much have you taking the tailgate off and pulling the front seats. Sometimes service data doesn't make sense. And sometimes it does. Rinse and repeat, do the other side. I'm gonna give you a part number on this little fella. There she is, it's made in, <laughs> you just write in your own thing now, 84363184, right from Chevy. Uh, I don't know, they might make them aftermarket. We got another gray Chevy here. What year is this one? He's kind of an oldie, oldie but a goodie, 14 Chevrolet Malibu. Oil pressure control valve has gone bad on that. Unlike the pickup trucks where you gotta tear the whole mother loving truck apart, GM got smart and said, hey, we're gonna have this screwed up oil pressure system. Let's make it accessible. This one they got on the outside. These ones, you gotta pull the engine apart. Well, that's enough Chevy hating for one day. You guys think I hate Chevy, so I keep it going. But really, I'm a, I'm a Chevy guy in my heart. I mean, let's be honest. They bought me a house, a bunch of property, and gonna put my kids through college. Why would I hate them? <laughs> I want to hate you for not going in that comment section. So make sure you do that. Questions, comments, concerns, Insta, Facebook. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.